you'll be having your summative assessment uh, after your Pongal holidays. Uh, so we'll start preparing. Already I've started preparing. Uh, I hope you all are doing the homework. Yes, yeah, from 18th, uh, your uh, uh, summative assessment 2 is starting. From 11th, you will have your minor exam. From 18th, you will have your major exam. Okay, so start preparing for that. Uh, already we have started revising. Uh, we finished 7th and 8th chapter. 6th chapter is totally objectives. So I told you to go through the lesson and go through the PPT. Yes, 6th and 10th lesson will be totally objective. So go through the lesson thoroughly. And 7th uh, and 8th, we finished learning the question answers. I hope you are all revising. Uh, or you were revising as you were revising in the class. As I already told you, during the evening, please do revise whatever we are learning in the class. Uh, practice the diagram, label them neatly, write the spellings, write the answers because that will help you to improve your handwriting. And this year, uh, uh, make it as a habit that you, you, you learn something new. You read a book or else you uh, start learning to draw um, or to improve your handwriting or uh, start reading newspapers, start listening to music to... Uh, Maybe if you start listening to music, you may one day become a great musician. And even by reading, uh, I think reading a book will be the best one. This year, buy one book. Uh, there are so many books. Just find a, a, a good book. Uh, start from a small book. Don't go for a big words. Okay, and start reading. That will help you to improve a lot. Okay, yeah, story books. Okay. Learn to dance, learn something this year. Make it as a resolution that yeah, this year I will master myself in drawing. I'll learn to sing. I'll learn to dance. I'll learn to uh, I learn some other language, new language. Yes. Okay. Okay. So now we'll get into the revision part. Uh, today we have to start ninth lesson. Okay. Ninth lesson question answers. So we will start revising that. That's okay. Ma'am, can you please allow me to share the screen? Whatever we are learning in the class in the evening, you just uh, revise them, brush up and write, okay? Yes. So, a very short answer type question. The first one is name the natural habitat of the polar bear. It is Arctic region. The natural habitat of the polar bear is Arctic region. What is the name given to the topmost layer of trees in the rainforest? The topmost layer of trees in rainforests. In tropical rainforest, in rainforest, you'll find dense uh, number of uh, trees. They'll be very close to each other. And the topmost layer is called canopy. Okay. Name the process by which plants make their own phot photosynthesis. Name a plant commonly found in deserts. It is cactus. What is the adaptation that helps the lion to hide amidst tall grass called? So amidst tall grasses, the lion hides itself and that adaptation is called camouflage. Okay, camouflage. Okay, now we get into the short answer type question answers. One second, yes. So I want everybody to be attentive and repeat behind me three, three times. Define habitat, each point three times, okay? A habitat is the natural home or environment of an animal, plant or other organisms. A habitat is the natural home or environment of an animal, 
plant or other organisms a habitat is the natural home or environment of an animal plant or other organisms it offers an organism food shelter and climatic conditions best suited for it to live it offers an organism food shelter and climatic conditions best suited for it to live it offers an organism food shelter and climatic conditions best suited for it to live so we'll repeat again a habitat is the natural home or environment of an animal plant or other organisms a habitat is the natural home or environment of an animal plant or other organisms it offers food shelter and climatic conditions best suited for it to live okay so this is the definition of habitat why are conifers cone shaped the cone shape of conifers helps to shed rain water and snow easily the cone shape of conifers helps to shed rain water and snow easily the cone shape of conifers helps to shed rain water and snow easily needle leaved conifers like spurs fir and pine trees are found at higher altitudes needle shaped this can be asked as an objective give an example of a needle leaved conifer or give an example of a tree which has needle shaped leaves so you will have to give the answer you can write any one okay needle leaved conifers like spurs fir and pine trees are found at higher altitudes needle leaved conifers like spurs fir and pine trees are found at higher altitudes again why are conifers cone shaped the cone shape of conifers helps to shed rain water and snow easily so because of the cone shape as they grow in the higher altitudes in higher altitudes uh, uh, there will be heavy rainfall and snowfall depending on the area so this cone shape will help them to shed off water rain water and snow easily needle leaved conifers like spurs fir and pine trees are found at higher altitudes next question why are oh sorry what are phytoplankton okay this was a lesson which you learned for your cycle test recently right so it will be very easy for you to revise quickly okay what are phytoplankton phytoplankton are sorry phytoplankton are 
microscopic plants that drift on the surfaces of oceans which are brightly lit by the sun so they'll float on the surface of water of ocean phytoplankton are microscopic plants that drift on the surfaces of oceans which are brightly lit by the sun phytoplankton are microscopic plants that drift on the surfaces of oceans which are brightly lit by the sun they are the most basic food available for all sea animals they are the most basic food available for all sea animals they are the most basic food available for all sea animals once again phytoplankton are microscopic plants microscopic means very small very small plants that drift on the surfaces of oceans which are brightly lit by the sun phytoplankton are microscopic plants that drift on the surfaces of oceans which are brightly lit by the sun they are the most basic food available for all sea animals they are the most basic food available for all sea animals next question define excretion the process of removing waste matter toxic materials and excess substances from the body is known as excretion the process of removing waste matter toxic materials and excess substances from the body is known as excretion the process of removing waste matter toxic materials and excess substances from the body is known as excretion so what is excretion the process of removing waste matter toxic materials and excess substances unwanted substances from the body is known as excretion okay fifth short answer type question explain the meaning of the living components of a habitat giving examples so collectively the living components are called biotic components right and the non living components are called abiotic components okay so the answer is animals plants and other living things present in an environment animals plants and other living things present in an environment are called biotic or living components animals plants and other living things present in an environment are called biotic or living components animals plants and other living things present in an environment are called biotic or living components biotic components are classified into three groups what are the three groups of biotic components producers consumers and decomposers 
so now we will write about them because they have asked you to give example producers plants are called producers yes consumers primary consumers secondary consumers and omnivores primary consumers are also called herbivores example cow deer and zebra secondary are also called secondary consumers are also called uh, carnivores example tiger wolves and lion omnivores peacock sparrows decomposers bacteria and fungi again animals plants and other living things present in an environment are called biotic or living components biotic components are classified into three groups producers consumers and decomposers producers plants consumers primary consumer herbivores like cow deer and zebra secondary consumers carnivores like tiger wolves and lion omnivores peacock and sparrows decomposers bacteria and fungi okay. decomposers will decompose the organic matter and will help to uh, help the nutrients to get mixed up in the soil and will increase the fertility of the soil next long answer type question the first question is define adaptation describe three ways in which the camel has adapted to the desert habitat special features so first part is you have to define adaptation so we are defining adaptation special features and habits of a living thing that help it to live in its habitat comfortably are called adaptations special features and habitats sorry habits sorry can repeat again special features and habits of a living thing that help it to live in its habitat comfortably are called adaptations special features and habits of a living thing that help it to live in its habitat comfortably are called adaptations special features and habits of a living thing that help it to live in its habitat comfortably are called adaptations second part of the question is describe three ways in which the camel has adapted to the desert habitat so we are telling the three points the camel has hump to store fat it can drink large quantities of water at one time and can stay without water for several days the camel has hump to store fat can drink large quantities of water at one time and can stay without water for several days the camel has hump to store fat can drink large quantities of water at one time and can stay without water for several days it excretes very little urine and its dung is dry 
it excretes very little urine and its dung is dry it excretes very little urine and its dung is dry dung is the excreta okay the waste so it is adapted in such a way that it excretes very little urine it can drink large quantity of water at one time and can stay without drinking water for several uh, days and the dung will be dry because the water gets absorbed in the body it does not sweat and its feet are padded so that it can walk on sand easily it does not sweat and its feet are padded so that it can walk on sand easily it does not sweat and its feet are padded so that it can walk on sand easily so we'll repeat again quickly define adapt adaptation describe three ways in which the camel has adapted to the desert habitat so definition of adaptation special features and please repeat with me special features and habits of a living thing that help it to live in its habitat comfortably are called adaptations special features and habits of a living thing that help it to live in its habitat comfortably are called adaptations the three ways in which camel has adapted to the desert habitat first point repeat two times the camel has hump to store fat can drink large quantities of water at one time and can stay without water for several days the camel has hump to store fat can drink large quantities of water at one time and can stay without water for several days it excretes very little urine and its dung is dry it excretes very little urine and its dung is dry it does not sweat and its feet are padded so that it can walk on sand easily it does not sweat and its feet are padded so that it can walk on sand easily okay now we'll move on to the second answer what kind of adaptations do you find in grazing animals grazing animals such as deer giraffe bison and zebra have well developed digestive system to survive on grass grazing animals such as deer giraffe bison and zebra have well developed digestive system to survive on grass grazing animals such as deer giraffe bison and zebra have well developed digestive system to survive on grass they have strong grinding teeth to chew tough grass they have strong grinding teeth to chew tough grass they have strong grinding teeth to chew tough grass they have strong long legs to run faster they have strong long legs 
to run faster. Once again, grazing animals such as deer, giraffe. Sorry, sorry, one second. Yes. Grazing animals such as deer, giraffe, bison and zebra have well developed digestive system to survive on grass. Repeat two times. Grazing animals such as deer, giraffe, bison and zebra have well developed digestive system to survive on grass. They have strong grinding teeth to chew tough grass. They have strong grinding teeth to chew tough grass. They have strong long legs to run fast. They have strong long legs to run fast. So these are the adaptations of grazing animals. So they have a uh, strong teeth, uh, grinding teeth, which will help them to chew and grind the tough grasses because they are all herbivores. So they eat different uh, varieties of grasses and most of the uh, plant cells, they are all made up of cellulose. They are tough to digest. So they have special digestive system that helps them to digest the grass and uh, this chewing the, the grass continuously is also a very important thing that helps them to digest the grass. And they have strong, long legs to run fast. Okay. So, this is the second question. Now, we have uh, three more answers, three, four, five, which we will continue tomorrow. So, today what is your homework is? You will have to learn. You will have to revise. One second. You will have to revise these answers, okay? Till uh, second long answer. So revise the five short answers, two long answers. Read the lesson thoroughly. Go through the objectives, okay? Objectives will come from the book, okay? So go through the lesson thoroughly. And write till second long answer. Tomorrow, uh, day after tomorrow, we will continue the third, fourth, and fifth answer. So you have two days time. Go through the lesson. Uh, all those who have not uh, learned a 7th and 8th lesson, you have time till tomorrow. Please finish the 7th, 8th and ninth lesson. Okay? Till long answer second one. 3, 4, 5 will continue on Wednesday. Okay? So, we will meet on Wednesday. Take care. Sorry for what, what happened. Okay, revise I'll ask questions on uh, Wednesday. Okay? Take care, children. Thank you.